mom and dad met in 1981. They began doing adventures with Canadian expeditions. Their hunger for the outdoors grew as time went on. To feed that hunger, they decided to spend a year paddling two 1,000 mile summers and wintering over in a cabin on Lake Athabasca. They came back energized by the experience. Five years later, they went for another year. This time, my mom became pregnant with my oldest brother, Eli Kazan Kesselheim. Well pregnant, my parents paddled the Kazan River. Kazan became Eli's middle name and his so-called birth river. My parents promised they would return with Eli by their side. Eli was a baby of the far north, born two months after my parents returned to Montana. At nine months, Eli, along with my parents, ventured down the 550 miles of the Yellowstone River. My mom happened to be pregnant with Sawyer on this trip, so the Yellowstone became Sawyer's birth river. My mom and dad paddled the real grand when Sawyer and Eli were both toddlers, and my mom was pregnant with me. You're probably guessing the real grand became my birth river. <laughs> the promise made by my parents was kept. When Eli turned 13, Sawyer 12, and myself 9, we returned to the Kazan River. The 37 days that was spent on the Kazan was filled with hardships, bug bites, overwhelming beauty, and an intense feeling of gratitude for my family. During this trip, I fell head over heels in love with the energy of the North and the rhythm that I felt beneath my feet. When I returned home, I longed to go back. Instead, my parents fulfilled their promise to Sawyer by returning to paddle the Yellowstone River. This trip was far more relaxing. The mileage was easy to gain with a pushy tailwind and the strong current constantly at our backs. We finished this journey in 21 days. The highway whizzed by and trains began recognizing our group, honking as they passed. We swam a lot, each day was fun. Yet the connection I felt with the far north was so different, so wild. I longed to feel the fresh northern river water going down my throat and the spring of sphagnum moss beneath my feet. The next winter, we did the long drive to the Rio Grande. The Rio Grande struggles to fill the canyons, the currents creeps along at an exhausted pace. Although the beauty of the land was breathtaking and the history along the river was overflowing. We spent Christmas on the Rio Grande that year. Our trip was 15 days long and vastly different from our other two expeditions. But my body still ached for the north. I was persistently asking my parents to go back. And finally, I won them over. So the Seal River in northern Manitoba is where we headed this time. All of my feelings for the far north came back to me when we returned. I felt as though the north had once again engulfed my body and soul. <laughs> I feel honored to have been raised in such a unique environment. My parents made their passion their livelihood and have passed that passion down to their children. I have embraced that passion, and I hope that I am capable of somehow making it my livelihood. They taught us map reading skills, good partner etiquette, and all camping techniques. We also learned the importance of family and to fully appreciate Mother Nature and the outdoors away from daily distractions of home. People, friends, and family, even strangers, constantly told my parents they were crazy to take such risks or that the kids were too young. What these people didn't realize is that my parents didn't put that age restraint on us. Instead, they replaced the conventional wisdom and civilized restraints with our own achievements. I am a result of those trips and family adventures. My personality has been built by all of them, the in intimate closeness I feel with my family is like no other family I've ever seen. I feel as though I can talk to my family about anything. Of course, whether they enjoy listening, well, that part I'm not always sure. <laughs> At the end of our journey on the seal, we had an epic 36-hour day on Hudson Bay. We were confronted by two polar bears, 
made a six mile open ocean crossing and were welcomed to the safety of Churchill, Manitoba by hundreds of beluga whales brushing our canoes. That day, I was definitely scared of my flipping mind. <laughs> I actually thought we were gonna die. But that day, I also gained a new perspective on my life. It's a constant struggle to maintain with civilization buzzing around me. But recently, I read the book, The Element by Ken Robinson. He reminded me about the importance of finding and pursuing your passion. After reading this book, I began to think about what my passion is and how to pursue it. Over time, my bond with the outdoors grew. I found that my daydreaming in school consisted of past memories of trips and hopes of going back to the far north. And that's when I realized it. My passion is going into the far north for a long extended time. Feeling that familiar pulse of mother nature and watching the beautiful muskox shakes the bugs away. I am planning a northern expedition of my own with three of my good friends so I can gain the confidence and experience of doing my own journeys without the guidance of my parents. I hope to expose my three friends' souls to this amazing place. In the long run, I hope that I will give, you this, give the same kind of loving instruction and eagerness for the outdoors to my children. So thank you, Mom and Dad, for helping me become who I am. Although I'm in the bow choosing my route and putting the power behind my actions, I know that you will continue to be in the stern, lightly steering me away from rocks of misjudgment and keeping my course true. So now you've heard my story and the journey that I took to find my passion. I don't know if my trip will be a complete success, but no matter the results, I will learn from my mistakes and strive off of my achievements. It's what feels right. And I encourage you to find your emotion and chase your passion, even if the unknowns are scary.